Welcome to our webinar today. Um, I wanted to, uh, first off, if uh, for everybody who's who joined us on uh, on the call and was on time, I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm sure we'll have some uh, uh, stragglers join us here as we uh, continue. But if uh, if you could just drop a note in the chat uh, box, um, let me know if you can hear me okay, and um, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Um, our webinar today, obviously, is uh, as you can see by the screen, technology to power up your customer journey, and. You know, this conversation, this kind of topic, you know, has been something that um, um, has something we, we, we've, you know, talked with our customers about for, um, you know, a long time and ultimately um, culminated into, a, into an infographic um, that, that we produced and uh, released earlier this year. And as a result, now we are here to um, kind of talk through that that a little bit more and how to, how to actually take some of those um, those key concepts and and put them into practice. Um, so first off, before we go too far, a little housekeeping. Uh, this is being recorded. Um, so if you uh, hear something that you um, uh, are interested in, um, you know, feel free to uh, reach out to us and we can send you the recording. Um, and um, oops, I'm auto advancing for some reason. Um, my name is Zach Winty and I'm the uh, national solution lead and um, you know marketing strategist for RBA and um, I am the um, uh, I'm the marketing strategist and I kind of put together this um, uh, this uh, um, presentation in this webinar here I'm going to fix one thing in our PowerPoint real quick while I'm kind of going through some some housekeeping but um, uh, the, the the vision and the journey that we ultimately had um, within this um, within the system was was around what are all the tools and technologies that that companies use um, to ultimately um, power and run a customer journey and a customer journey process is simply the the, the idea um, that when your customers um, you know are are interacting with you what are the steps and what are the pieces that they um, that they take so that they get through the point of from awareness to ultimately conversion and, and, and customer advocacy. Um, so that's that's kind of the uh, the vision and the logic. Um, go ahead and, uh, and and reshare here. But um, again, as I said, I'm Zach Winty and I'm the National Solution Lead and Marketing Strategist for RBA. Uh, my email address is there. Feel free to, uh, to to reach out to me at any time with any questions. Um, as well as uh, anytime during this presentation, um, right within the, the GoToWebinar um, app, you can uh, type a question and I'll be happy to answer that. So uh, without further ado, um, we can uh, kind of go ahead and uh, keep moving forward. So ultimately, the vision is, is to take tools um, that, that you have maybe in your, in your business currently or that you're considering um, and use them to ultimately drive advocacy, because um, as we understand, you know, customers don't just wake up, you know, ready to buy your products or services. They they don't start out as a loyal brand customer of you, you know, um, but we can help them there. We can we can move them along the path and get them to the point where uh, they become that that you know that that loyal brand uh, follower that everybody kind of strives after. Um, you know, I was getting ready for this webinar this week, and, and I actually um, had Chinese with, with my family and, and opened up my, my fortune cookie, and that's actually what was inside. So keep in mind that the, it's the journey, not the destination that counts. And too often, um, when we do some strategies with customers, and we, we talk, and we ask them what their, their goals and their desires are, um, often they're around conversion rates or closing more customers or generating more leads. And ultimately, that's a very destination-focused view. Um, it's a it's a view that you know it's a metric and it's important to understand. But there's a whole journey that goes along with getting to the point of um, getting to the point of a conversion or generating a new lead. And you have to understand from the customer's point of view, they are not metric-minded. They're not focused on on hope, you know, making sure you hit your, your marketing qualified lead number um, this month. They're trying to solve a problem. And the customer journey is all about helping uh, generate awareness, uh, identifying needs, 
um, capturing leads and, and, and converting those and nurturing those prospects and converting and getting the sale and then turning them into loyal brand advocates. Um, and to do that, there are some tools. So let's spend a couple minutes talking about some of the tools that we're going to talk about today. And then we're going to break this down by um, the, the six phases that we look at as, as the customer journey. Um, but for uh, just kind of a level set and for a, um, uh, you know, as a starting point, what we're looking at is obviously a lot of this is built around a digital platform and, and an ecosystem. And our goal is to take somebody from an unknown customer all the way to an, into an, um, you know, a, a persona, a personalized visit, finally ending up at a individual one-to-one -one marketing campaign. And so starting off, you know, digital marketing, those are, those are your tools, mobile apps, social media, you know, online, um, content marketing, all the things that are driving awareness for your business. Um, they can be multiple systems. But ultimately, they are the awareness generating and ultimately traffic driving tools. Um, they are then leading them to what we call a content management system. And those are platforms that allow publishing and modifying your content. So that can be something as simple as WordPress or you know, a, a multi-system um, you know, personalization engine like Sitecore. So there's a lot of you know, tools that, that it you know, we can talk about. And today isn't about the specific tools. We'll give some examples. But it's more about where they fit in the ecosystem. Um, third on our list, marketing automation. So this is where you capture your leads and ultimately um, run them through some level of, of multi-step um, online channels and, and automate um, nurture and follow-up. Um, at the, the next level, customer relationship management, CRM. So this is the core um, data management for potential and, and current customers. Um, so what are they doing, who are they, and wh what have they done with us either in the past or what are we trying to do with them in the future. Um, and finally, obviously, uh, the last two are very important to um, kind of the business to uh, consumer side, so e-commerce systems um, where you are obviously generating um, online revenue. Uh, but it's actually getting to be a, a bigger topic. We have a lot of conversations with customers around e-commerce for business to business where it's repeat purchases or things that they're trying to spend less time with inside sales and make it uh, make less friction to purchase, make it easier for a customer to go online and, and place an order um, when they're ready. And the last one is our customer service tools. So these are self-service tools or um, you know, systems that allow customer care to, to happen. When you have a problem or have an issue with a business, um, the, the company needs to be able to service you. Um, sometimes that's actually the most important step of the entire process because um, retaining and, and keeping customers um, will drive and ultimately have a bigger impact on, on a lot of revenue numbers um, than finding new customers along the way. So with that, um, let's kind of dive into to our first phase and, and kind of understand the view um, of phase one. So phase one, identifying needs. This is the point in time where, where your customers are trying to identify what do they actually need? What is their problem? They have a problem. They understand that they have some pain that they're trying to solve, but what do they need to solve that? And really, at this point in, in, in time in, in the journey, it's your goal just to help your customers um, you know, kind of begin to realize what their need is and, and frame that up and formalize that. Um, they're going to be doing research. And if, if anybody's ever bought anything online, um, you know that typically you don't just decide you have a, have a need for something and go out and purchase it. You research it. You read about it. Um, you probably look at reviews. You might go and check um, an Amazon.com to see if you know what the reviews are there, or if it's a um, you know or, or other um, you know retailer sites to look at the the reviews. You know we're in the process um, of buying a new washer and dryer for our house. I didn't just go out to the store and point. Um, I've started with okay, what do I want? Do I want a top load or do I want a front load? And then I research and I, what's the best option? What's the price point? And I'm spending a lot of time, and it actually just drives into this very first statistic we have here on the screen. Um, you know, and I, I think it actually 
uh, applies to business to consumer just as much because as humans we all work the same you know but a b2b buyer is checking 10 resources uh, before making a purchase or even talking to a salesperson they're doing their due diligence consumers are in control now they have control and they have the ability to um, reach out and look at and understand more about your business and what you do um, without ever having to talk to you and that's a good and a bad thing you know for a good thing it's you give if you give them the right content and you give them tools um, to to do some research they will feel more comfortable and they will be more informed when it comes time to talk to your um, your, your salespeople or your your team um, but if they don't find the information and you don't provide them that that level they're gonna find it from somewhere else which is either a source of um, you know, a competitor um, or a lot of times it's information you don't control which can be reviews good and bad it can be uh, there's there can be a lot of misinformation so at this point in time you know kind of two key pieces that are that are, that are the first phase of our ecosystem that we worry about are social media and our web management system so the content management system this means having a tool that's easy to upload new content whether that's product pages or um, you know articles or research or anything that your company is doing press releases the ability to post that easily effectively and make it easy for a consumer to consume that information um, is going to have an impact on their research cycle but the other side of that coin is social media understanding what people are saying about your industry about your business about your products and if you have just a engagement platform and you're just putting messages out in the marketplace but you're not listening and you're not resolving that information back you can't react to information and customers are going to find that information from, from somewhere else because um, what you need to understand at, at, at the core is 57 percent of purchase decisions are done before a customer even calls or engages with a supplier um, they they're halfway through that sales cycle before they've even engaged with you so all about you know kind of phase one and 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 getting to go is they've made half of their decision up um, before they before they've given you a chance to influence them um, so they are 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 informed and if they're not informed by you they're going to be informed by your competitors um, and then obviously the last statistic here is 54% um, of buyers begin with informational uh, research and spend nearly 80% um, of their time online so they're looking for that source of information whether it's on your Facebook page your Twitter page your LinkedIn page um, Pinterest um, you know whatever whatever social media flavor of the day is that that's appropriate for your business they're they're reading about you they're reading about your competitors they're reading about your products they want to understand is this the right solution for me and so the way you the way you measure this and the way you understand how this works is you want to you want to monitor your web traffic you want to look at time spent on the site are people coming to your site and um, immediately um, clicking through and clicking multiple pages and spending time reading articles or are they bouncing are they you know did they find you in a search engine and visit your page not find what they wanted right away and left um, those are those are gonna be key indicators are are you communicating the right message at the beginning um, to your customers the other part that's happening here as we talk about a connected ecosystem is you if you're if you're working with a customer journey or a digital experience platform you're tracking information about these customers you might not know who they are yet um, but you're, you're getting click data and behavioral data where did they go what did they click on what information did they have so ultimately you can use that in a future stage and we'll talk about that when we come into nurturing prospects how we pull that that first um, that first visit data into um, and use it from a from a marketing standpoint all right so they they've worked their way through they've identified a need and now it's time to start to uh, engage now ultimately business wants a customer to engage right away that that's obviously the goal because if they leave your site um, they may not come back and that's why you know advertising networks have created things called retargeting where you leave um, all of a sudden you're gonna start seeing ads for the business that you're on everywhere you go and that's not by accident or coincidence um, it's not 
what they call the, the red car uh, syndrome, where as soon as you buy a red car, you start to see more red cars everywhere. It's truly because they have used uh, behavioral targeting saying, hey, you did not convert. You did not become a lead yet. So we're going to drive you back, ultimately bringing you back to um, our lead capture system and, and ultimately getting you into our, uh, our pipeline. So you know, once, they, once a customer understands the problem and generally the, the possible solutions, um, you know, the goal is to get them to engage with content. And whether that's a white paper download or a product sheet download or a video or sign up to join a webinar. Um, any of that kind of information that you're giving to your uh, to your customers um, is, is an excuse. It's an exchange in value. I'm giving you something of value, and in turn, all I'm asking is your name, your email address, and maybe a little other identifying information. And if it's valuable enough to the end consumer, they're willing to give up with that information. If not, they're going to move on. Um, but at this stage, getting that information really isn't enough. And unfortunately, a lot of customers only worry about capturing it. They don't know what to do with it once they have it. And the key statistic out of, out of this entire phase is, is this first one that we show here. The idea of marketing automation software generates two times the number of leads than a blast email. The idea is we're going to not just capture information. We, we want to actually get you to, to the point of becoming a qualified lead, meaning we truly believe you have a buying potential. There's truly an opportunity um, to do business with you. And just sending out an email, I have a customer right now who's kind of going through this, this journey. And they are kind of connecting their platforms and they're getting the system. And right now, they do a monthly email blast to all their, all their prospect companies. And they just say, you know what, here's our special for the month. It, it is X. Um, and then they hope. They sit back and they hope. And they know it's not the right solution, but they didn't have any tools before uh, to do it any differently. So they, they've kind of just been sending this out, um, and it hasn't been working. They don't see the value that, they, that they're getting. And ultimately, the customers have, have been trained now. I'm going to wait if I am in a buying mood. I'm going to wait till that email comes, and I'm going to wait till they tell me that what the special is this month. Because if I'm interested, I'll get that coupon, or I'll get that deal, and I'll use it. Same problems happens on the consumer side. Um, you know, we, we all know um, businesses and we've all worked with, with retailers and organizations that send out coupons or send out promotions in their email. And there, there's no rhyme or reason. There's no personalization. Um, it's just here's today's, here's today's offer. And ultimately, um, customers become trained to wait. And they do not make buying decisions now based on um, – you know, needs and wants, they make buying decisions on, can I get it cheaper from you? And that's not a good position to be in with your customers. A um, couple other key things that, that we care about, though, on the kind of the, the business to business side. 70% of business to business executives use mobile technology to first research an offering. So they're spending their time on their phone. Is your content and is your lead capture system mobile enabled? Is it, is it a responsive website? Can you um, get through a LinkedIn page or a Facebook page and fill out a form on a mobile site? If you can't, it's time to think about it because businesses and, and decision makers are using this information um, or using their, their mobile phones. Um, is it any different than what the, I guarantee everybody on this, this phone call does? Um, they, they click in and they use their phones and they move around. You know, whereas, um, you know, consumers are only looking for information from companies that they're easy to do business with. The biggest barrier to business is ease of use. And if you start to ask and you start to look at customers who didn't purchase from you, um, you know, you get into this model of was it easy to do business? Because at the end of the day, um, typically prices for similar products are relatively similar. Um, yes, there's obviously always scenarios where, where one is, is a drastic change. But given that the idea that, that pricing comes down to it, if it's easy to do business with somebody, I like them, or they make my life easy, or they um, you know, didn't, didn't make it difficult you know, to get through the process, I'm willing to do business with them. And mobile is a big part of that. Um, 
And then the last, the last key th understanding of the kind of statistic on here that's worth kind of focusing on is 80% of business decision makers prefer to get information in a series of articles versus an advertisement. So sending that monthly message out with an ad, here's our special this month, doesn't have as much value as, as informing and educating your customers. Giving them small chunks to consume over a, over a longer period of time as opposed to just throwing up an ad and hoping it hits. Um, that's going to be a much more effective method to, to capture um, leads and give them something of value, have that value exchange take place. So what we're looking for here um, to measure success or to kind of determine, you know, is this stage working is we're looking for the, um, you know, the landing pages, right? How many, how many visits um, to our landing page do we have? What was our conversion rate, uh, you know, of those customers? What were the leads generated from them? And ultimately, finally, the quality of leads. We're going to come back and we're going to tie our systems together to look at the quality of leads. But if we're not getting a conversion, we have one of two problems. Either the value exchange was not was not uh, in line. We asked for too much information, or we didn't offer enough value for the information that we asked for, or we hit the wrong audience. Phase one, we didn't do a good enough job in phase one. We didn't inform them of enough, and we have the wrong type of buyer because they're not willing and able to do business with us. All right, so phase three. We're starting to tie in a lot of systems here. So we, you know, in, in, in phase one, we had our kind of our digital marketing tools pushing to our, our, our content management system. In phase two, we really focused on, on marketing automation and, and capturing these and getting that information into CRM so we can do something with it. But now we're going to start really tying all those pieces together and, and, and kind of working them in phase three. And truly, phase three is probably the most important of all because we're going to leverage a fully um, integrated ecosystem to do this well. We're going to have our content management system, our website, that it's going to send personalized information. Um, you know, we, we want to get away from the idea of just having one size fits all content on our website. We actually like to get in the idea of how do we define the persona? Are you an influencer? Or are you a buyer? Are you a um, what region are you in? Do you have different um, you know different buying cycles? Um, what is it that's going to you know motivate you as a as a customer? But truly. Uh, in fact, we had a conversation about this this morning with our team. It was very interesting. The idea of personalization is very important, but individualization is even more important. We want to get past personas. We want to get to the idea of, of I truly know you as a consumer. You've given me your information. I've tracked some information about you based on, the, on, on what you're doing. I can provide you a personalized, individualized opportunity and offer through my system. And that's what uh, what these platforms. So let's kind of talk about what that what that means and what that looks like. Um, you know, once we've once we've got them into the system, now it's time to, to to nurture them, convince them that we are the solution to their problem, right? You know, and on average, 50% of leads are not yet ready to buy. So just because they filled out that form doesn't mean they're buying. They're still in research mode. They're still trying to understand. Um, are you the right solution? And we've all done that where we filled out something on the website because we wanted a little more information. We needed more than the website could give us. We wanted that white paper. We wanted that worksheet. We wanted that ebook, and we wanted to read it. Doesn't mean we were ready to buy, but what happened? Customer, you as a customer filled it out, and a salesperson called you. And then you have to do the awkward, yeah, I'm, I'm interested, I truly am, I'm sorry that you had to call me, but not right now, but call me in the future because I might be, and you do that dance. And, and inside sales, people deal with this on a, on a daily basis. Um, truly, there, there, there might be a valuable contact down the road, um, but they're just not right, right now. And the idea of nurturing a lead um, over time actually has an ROI to it because nurtured leads make 47% larger purchases than non-nurtured. Until I truly understand why you're the right business for me and all the solutions that you offer, I can't make an informed buying decision. So just because I came in thinking I know what my needs are or thinking I know what my 
um, you know, what my problem is doesn't actually mean I'm a informed consumer. It doesn't mean I know all the potential solutions to the problem. So nurturing a customer um, properly ultimately drives to higher, higher revenue. And so we're going to use our content management system, and we're going to start using, um, remember that behavioral tracking we talked about in phase one, where we are tracking the pages that they went to, and we are tracking what they clicked on. And did they click on a, a pricing page versus a informational page? Or maybe they clicked on the careers page, because all of those send very different signals. And that isn't as meaningful until phase two happened, where we captured their lead information. Now we can associate all that behavior that's happened on the website as an unknown person to the individual. And now we know who they are. And now we know what to do with them. Um, we can start to lead score them, and we can start to uh, uh, take those buying signals, right? I looked at a pricing page. That's a higher buying signal. If I clicked five pages on the careers page, I'm not a buyer. I'm a, I'm a job hunter. I have a completely different view. And typically, when you look at a click pattern of a, of a, a prospective candidate or a, a job hire, they are more engaged on your website than anything because they're doing research. They want to know about you. They want to know about the business. Maybe they have a interview coming up, right? So this is all information that um, that you can use to start to personalize and profile your, your, your targets and your potential customers. Now we can start to send them not only email messages, social, maybe SMS, whatever your, whatever your channels are, but we can start to alter our, our web behavior and we can start to expose types of articles or new content to them um, based on their buying profile. Maybe we had certain articles that we didn't have available on the website till after um, they converted the first time. And you know, using a system like a Sitecore connected to a CRM, connected to a marketing automation system, allows all those pieces to start to work together. We can take that personalized user information and now start to build that profile. Um, we can start to work with it in a, in a singular view. You know, and and this isn't this isn't even bleeding or or, or super cutting edge stuff. Six to seven percent of best in class companies are more likely to use a marketing automation platform. So this isn't, this isn't a brand new thing that nobody's doing. Companies are doing it, and companies are, are using it, and the companies that are using it are going to produce, uh, produce better. So what we want to look at and what we want to understand is, you know, what is the, what is the click through rates? What, is our, what are the qualified leads that we're generating out of here? And we're going to refine those models. And we're going to say, you know what, the scoring, maybe we're too heavy here, we're too light here, we want to give some more value to this. Because ultimately, um, the last statistic is kind of eye-opening and maybe kind of scary if you look at it, but it's 79% of marketing leads never convert to sales. So the common is, cause is poor performance um, in lead nurturing. In other words, people would stop by your website and nothing ever happened to it. They didn't get anything sent to them. And the problem with that is, is either there wasn't an automated system in place or it was somebody's job to, to remember to pull the list to send an email. Um, you didn't give them the right content that they were searching for. Not every customer journey is going to look the same. People bounce around. People move around. And you need platforms and systems that be, are, are, allow you to kind of keep up. So at this point in time, you're looking at what are my click-through rates? What are my qualified leads? My goal is to nurture you down the path, understanding your motivation, understanding the velocity, how fast are you moving through um, you know, kind of these buying signals. And then finally, what are the friction points? What are the, the problems? If, if, if anybody on this phone call is a salesperson, um, you know, you're taught, taught sales training to ask for objections. Because you, you know, if a customer doesn't present them, they're thinking them in their head, well, marketing automation and content management and nurturing is really the same thing. You need to present the objectives, you know, uh, the the objections, or ask for the objections early on. Find out what's getting in their way of purchasing, because if you don't, customers are going to retain those, and um, it's going to block the conversion process, whether that's conversion from a um, a prospect to a lead to a you know, to ultimately not wanting to talk to a salesperson or farther along in the sales process. So understanding 
the you know kind of these systems is going to help you know where you're at. And finally, what it does is it increases your lead value. And that's the last piece. Salespeople are there to sell. They're not, you know, they they're not they're not effective if they're just picking up a phone and calling a bunch of people that might or might not be customers. That's just a waste, ultimately a waste of time and a waste of skill set. Marketing automation and, and content management systems allow you to eliminate that problem. You can now pass a what we call a marketing qualified lead over to sales. It's a better lead. It's not just the first time that they visited. It's we truly believe that this is the right person to follow up with. And ultimately, that becomes a, a better value um, to our salespeople. Uh, which allows us then to move to the last or to the next phase, which is closing sales. Because at the end of the day, that's the way we make money. We need to close our sales. Whether we're a business to consumer, um, you know, environment where somebody is visiting our store or going online and making a purchase, or we're or business to business and we're working a deal and we're getting signed on the dotted line uh, agreements to do business. So again, we're still working with our, our, our platforms, our content management system, marketing automation, CRM, but their their priorities and their values kind of kind of change and kind of flip, right? You know, we're not going to be nurturing near as much or as heavy, not relying on the content management system near as much um, to to give them and educate them. Sales is going to get involved now, and they're going to use the CRM system to document and add more information to the information that they already have. As a salesperson, if you um, get a lead and you know contextually what they've done, I know where they clicked, I know what emails they received, I know what they've responded to, I know what they filled out, that gives me information to put my sales call in context. And I know I can understand the the, the you know kind of the personality and the profile of the customer that I'm that I'm reaching out to. Is that 100% accurate every time? Absolutely not. But it's a starting point, and it's better than than a cold lead because now I can at least call and say, "Hey, I saw you downloaded this. Did you get any information? Do you have any questions?" It gives me an excuse to have a conversation, and ultimately, that's what we want to do. We want to help, you know, we want to help our customers decide whether it's time to to buy um, or it's time to um, you know kind of close them out, move on, right? We want to provide them the information and provide them the deals. But at the end of the day, um, you know, we want to help them make a decision. And, and, and you know, the dread, dreaded no decision happens in many of 26% of deals, right? We're getting people over to sales too early before they were even able to decide if they wanted to make that decision. Um, so we want to kind of eliminate that so sales can just close deals. And um, interestingly enough, though, um, you know, when, when we're looking at, at, at kind of this, it's – we need to have connected systems because we need to be able to understand that as soon as a customer is ready and we've identified them, we can get them into the hands of salespeople effectively. And a CRM system allows you to um, have a whole lot of workflow as opposed to just having a, an email file. I actually have a customer right now who um, they get a bunch of leads and they have a lead coordinator who will take all those leads and she will email them out the next day. Um, and she tries to email them to some of the sales managers, and the sales manager will get it and tries to email them to the salespeople to follow up. And it's two or three days, if you're lucky, um, to get that followed up on. And that's time wasted. That's time you can be spent with the customer because ultimately, based on their buying behaviors, when that customer is ready to purchase, they, the, you know, 35 to 50 percent of sales go to the vendor that, that responds first with the right information. Uh, you know, and, and ultimately increasing, you know, your sales opportunities on average, um, you know, ha has value. So, you know, the next statistic, 20% increase in sales when leads are nurtured versus not. So we're going to see more sales opportunities generated from those leads. It's common sense. It makes sense. So what we're looking at here is, is our revenue growth, our, our re real-time sales activity. What are we generating? Um, we're going to tie that to our, our, our business intelligence. What what products are they looking at? What is the uh, what has the experience been like so far? Right? What information did they did they work with and 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 view and see um, as a result of of our nurture efforts? Because at this point in time, it's now time to close the deal. And, and so, assuming we've got a, a great salesperson, he had the information at hand, he was able to track everything in CRM, so he was able to stay up on top of it in real time, 
And with the help of marketing, he was actually able to continue to nurture those customers because he didn't have to manually remember to send an email every other week to kind of follow up with a, with a new product. The nurturing process and the nurturing engine did that for him. So the salesperson becomes better, becomes more effective, and has better tools. Um, ultimately, that gets us to the concept of, of delighting a customer. This is where we deliver on our promise. We've we've sold them the product, and now it's time, you know, it's now it's time to actually either, uh, if we're service business, it's delivering the service. If we're a e-commerce, it's it's execution, you know, shipping or, or fulfillment of the, you know, of the product. So, um, you know, you kind of get to that that idea where um, you want to build some delight into every process, um, because at the end of the day. Customer retention and keeping a customer longer will have an impact on your business. So increasing customer retention by five percent increases profits by twenty-five to ninety-five percent. And you know, I'll use a story. I'll use a, a, a good example here um, from that, I, that I've used in, in a lot of presentations. Um, but you know, I, I, I switched cell phone providers uh, about a year and a half ago, and you know, our, our, our first provider. It was expensive. We just thought we were paying a ton of money, so we thought, well, let's. You know, my wife actually had a had a corporate uh, package um, through another provider. We said, let's try it. Let's give it a shot. Those are famous last words. Let's give it a shot. Um, poor service, just bad service all around. And I was getting, you know, 3G data. I'm slow data service on the phone, and and I'm I'm very mobile. Um, you know, travel for work, and I just it, it wasn't working. So we called customer care multiple times. We have an issue. I said the phones. I never had this problem before. Is it where we live? And we went through this continuously. Um, spent 12 plus hours dealing with customer care, really to no resolution. And the final um, suggestion from them was, well, we could probably get a engineer to look at this for you. We can get them out to um, you know the, do a do a data test. But it's probably going to be two or three months. That was kind of my breaking point, my final straw. Um, I had a product that wasn't working for me that I that I was very dependent on, um, and so passive aggressively, uh, I'll, I'll be honest, I hopped onto Twitter and I posted a message, and I kind of said, you know, this, this is awful, this is poor service, just not happy, and I tagged them in it. Um, that was the passive aggressive part, but they responded within an hour, so I'll give them points for. For that, um, but when they responded, they said, "Hey, direct message us your phone number so we can look into it." And I thought, "Okay, I knew what I was doing. I was hoping they'd respond. I was hoping you would maybe get some some attention and get it escalated." And I I did. I sent them my number, and the first response I got back was, "Have you called customer care?" And that's the thing. We'd spent 12 hours calling customer care and talking to them. So now we've got a online customer service channel. That either didn't care to look up our account actually before they sent us a message, or couldn't. Their system wasn't connected. Their customer service system for social wasn't connected to their customer service for their call center. And so now you have two systems, and they didn't even know what we had purchased um, to, to follow up. So the first response was just to triage. And at that point in time, it was time for me to move on. We canceled our service and we went back to our original provider because. That customer, that 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 cell phone company, lost revenue. Think about all the money they lost. Um, you know, I'm a year and a half later, and we pay 200 something dollars a month for our cell phone. That, you know, again, I'm only one customer. Am I going to put them out of business? No. But if that process um, repeats, there's a very exponential number of of revenue loss. So you know, a a when you look at it from somewhat dissatisfied to totally satisfied. Um, a totally satisfied customer contributes 2.6 times more revenue than a somewhat satisfied customer, um, and ultimately 14 times more revenue than a somewhat dissatisfied customer. The money that they that they give you um, repeatedly um, and over and over again is it's large, um, and it's not something to be to be ignored. Um, so this is at a point in time where your customer service systems need to be tied in with all your other systems, because as soon as a customer onboards, they should be going through a nurture campaign, a customer onboarding campaign, and 
customer service should be able to see everything that's happened. What marketing messages that have they seen? What offers were they provided? What did they purchase? Um, because that 360 view of the customer allows you as an organization to provide information to your customers. It allows you to, to resolve issues effectively um, and not just say, hey, did you call our 1-800 number? Because I can't tell if you did or not. Um, and ultimately, it, that's what's going to, to drive revenue. Um, it's six or seven times more costly to attract a new customer than it is to retain an existing customer. Cost of acquisition are not going to get any cheaper. In fact, they're going to get more competitive. As, as you start to look at more platforms, um, whether it's a digital acquisition, uh, you know, an ad uh, that you run through, uh, you know, Facebook or, or Google AdWords or Twitter, um, I think Instagram right now, you know, I think if you're going to buy ads on Instagram, your minimum monthly spend is in the $10,000 a month range. Um, you know, there, it's not a cheap process to go out and, and acquire um, new sets of customers. And companies who sell advertising and sell access to those customers are getting smart, and they know they have something of value. So holding on to your current customers is going to become more important than ever, and, and the only way to do that is to, is to understand that this part of the journey, this step in this process, isn't, it doesn't end at phase four. You sold them, the, the journey isn't over. The customer is going to come back or they're going to tell others. And if you have a bad experience, what do you do? You tell everybody you know. And that's happening right now with your business. So ultimately, um, there's two things you need to be watching for. Right? You need to watch for what does the customer do. You need to, you know, you need to track satisfaction, so whether that's a net promoter score or a survey system. Um, you know, and integrate that into your CRM so that way you, you can prioritize who are our top customers and who are our top um, people because we want to we want to work with them. We want to offer them a opportunity to upgrade when the new product comes out, maybe at a discount, or uh, if they have a customer service uh, problem, maybe our SLA is a little bit better for our our, our top promoters. Um, you know, but but tying all that that information together. Um, you know, ultimately is, is, is going to have an impact on your business. It, again, you don't end at phase four. Customer retention, um, you know, is, is important. But this is also where another angle comes in, and, and this is social listening. We talked about it at the beginning of the funnel, right? When, you, when you're listening to social channels to widen your funnel, to find more prospects, it's also important at the end of the funnel. It's important when you're talking retention to listen to, are there problems? Can You're going to find, you know, um, my favorite studies is Twitter. Twitter will will be able to guess um, the likelihood of a flu outbreak faster than any medical system um, and, and people who do this. So you know, to, social media powers um, uh, you know a lot of information. If you're looking at the right things, and you're going to find things quicker than waiting for complaints to come in. Proactive action is what we're talking about here because ultimately our goal is to is to get to phase six and that's creating advocacy and this, these are the the you know kind of the, the peak of the summit right so we, we, we this is a journey and and this is the top this is the this is the summit where you know this is where you turn you know a customer into into a raving fan um, you have a solid reputation you've done right by them and ultimately they love you for it and they repeat purchases they continue to buy they talk about you they refer business referred customers have a 37 percent higher retention rate so not only are you as not only is a satisfied customer more profitable but when they refer other customers those customers retain longer it's a very exponential process. The more you refer, the more you're going to generate. And ultimately, um, you know, it, it, it's a cycle. And if you can get ultimately a brand advocate, you know, advocate, they're 50% more likely to influence a purchase. Um, yet, you know, only 20% of brands use advocates and experts um, in their marketing programs. So they don't do influencer marketing. They're not doing um, you know, kind of a viral thank you program, getting your customers to to talk about your your products, um, because if you if you look at this st statistic um, and believe it, 84% of business business deals stem from an existing customer referral. Somebody probably told you about the product in in, in a B2B environment. Industry people talk. That's that's plain and simple. Do you want them to talk? 
well about you or do you want to talk poorly about you? And that's ultimately what we care about here is, is generating those referrals and, and having a mechanism in place to know where they came from so we can thank the customer that referred um, the new prospect. And uh, I'll, I'll leave you with the last stat, um, which is 91% of customers say they give referrals, yet only 11% of salespeople ask for them. So how do we use our automation platforms to autom you know, automate that? Well, when a customer converts as part of our onboarding, we can ask for a referral automatically. And when they click on a link and say, I'd be happy to, um, salesperson can be notified and a task can be created for them to reach out to them. Or they can fill out the referral right online or they can share it. There's a lot of ways you can start to use your tools in a, in a connected fashion. Um, so, you know, as we, as we kind of run down on time here, I kind of leave you with this last thought and, and, and it's wordy, but you know, understanding your customer's journey, you can leverage technology to kind of unite your marketing, your sales, and your customer service functions to increase qualified leads, enhance the customer experience, and ultimately increase revenue, because that's what we're there for. Um, you know, we want to be able to drive, um, you know, drive business um, you know, throughout this entire journey, and we want to increase our numbers, but remember, it's the journey that's important, not not necessarily any one individual step along the way. Um, so with that, I, I, you know, I'm going to kind of open it up to kind of Q and A. If you have a question, feel free to type it in the uh, in the GoToWebinar chat box here. Um, yeah, I've got I've got one kind of queued up um, waiting. I'll, I'll I'll answer that one first, but um, feel free to kind of um, ask your question here. And I'll start with this first one. It's what is the best way to start um, this if you have some of these tools but don't really have them connected. Okay. So that's that's honestly where a lot of our customers already are. They have a CRM, they have a content management system, but they've never thought about connecting them. And so with that, start small. Plan it out. What could we do differently knowing that we have these tools? What could we what's a small test of change? Um, so at the most simple level, it's how do we, maybe we automate our, um, you know, our process from getting a customer um, and do customer onboarding. So we're going to just send out a, a series of emails um, and touch points and schedule some touch points with the sales rep to follow up to make sure that the customer got exactly what they, uh, they were promised during the sales cycle. Um, or maybe it's on the front end, on the lead management side, and we're going to, all customers don't just fill out a form. Um, to download the white paper, but we have a series of seven emails that follows up afterwards, and we track that behavior. And if they open it, they get the next one. If they don't, they get a you know they get a reminder. Or eventually, they get passed off to sales. So start start small and pick areas of of opportunity and areas for you know kind of improvement uh, based on your business. Understand kind of what you want to do, and honestly, the other big thing, um, draw it out. Sit down with a really big piece of paper or stand up at a whiteboard and draw out all the ways customers get into your business. Um, you know, can kind of start to map it out. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you know, in fact, RBA offers kind of a, a customer journey, um, you know, mapping exercise. But but start simple, right? We're still talking the simple. So just draw it out. Put some ideas down and start to look at where there's friction. And if you're honest with yourself and you're honest with, about your business, you're gonna know. Um, you're going to know points of friction. You're going to know points where um, customers um, are having issues or internally you struggle with this step. And those are areas, mark them in red. And finish the entire journey and then come back and look for those red points. Because the red points are areas where, you know what, we should probably work on this. If we can make this easier for the customer or make us more efficient um, in doing it, we're going to have a, we're going to have a, a revenue impact, whether that's we're going to lower our cost to serve, or we're going to increase our um, conversion rates. So that's where I would that's where I would start. Um, if there's any other questions, um, I don't see any more in the chat box. Um, again, feel free to email me. Um, uh, it's zach.winty at RBA Consulting. Be happy to um, I'll be happy to answer any questions that that, that you may have. Um, but otherwise, I want to thank everybody for, uh, for coming out today, for listening to the journey. Um, if you haven't, uh, if you were invited to the webinar but you haven't downloaded the infographic um, for this, rbaconsulting.com slash journey. 
um, will have that information and you can download a copy of uh, the infographic. It has the, the phases, it has the stats, um, or feel free to email me and I will send it to you. Um, but with that, I will sign off and thank everybody for coming. <laughs>